Good day. Uh, in my last uh, Always Developing session, I started working on uh, converting my WordPress plugin, um, WP Quan Pixie, that uh, allows you to see the uh, Quan schedules and events and click the little arrow to uh, uh, run an event now rather than later, uh, from using Elm for its UI to use in Gleam uh, as the language for its UI uh, using the Lustre uh, framework, I guess, web framework, I guess you call it. Um, we have at the at this moment, we have used ES Gleam, uh, which is this library here. Uh, to basically build and bundle um, the JavaScript that can be output by Gleam uh, so that it's embeddable in a WordPress UI. Um, and now I need to actually convert the Elm code uh, to you, well, basically to Gleam. Uh, at the moment, we are using this as a little placeholder. So I have a little counter instead, which is fine. Uh, and what we have done has got it to the point where I can pass in some variables um, when it starts up. So when I refresh this page, it's starting at five instead of the usual zero that I had it at. Now I need to convert all this. This is the Elm code. Um, and I need to convert this to Gleam, uh, which is going to be fun. It's a, it's, I mean, it's not huge. It's only 489 lines, uh, but I haven't really touched Elm in a while. Um, and there's some little tricky bits that I'll need to be careful with. But uh, here it goes. So first things first, um, let's... One thing that I do need to be careful of is when this UI is loaded, at the moment, it's a bare URL there, if you look at that, or oh, you can't see it. Uh, take my word for it. <laughs> it's uh, it's calling UI.js without any of these version uh, parameters on them. Uh, actually, I can, I can make that easier to see. Uh, where's the console? Split console. There we go. Okay. So hopefully this is above my head. Yeah, it should be. So that's the uh, UI being loaded. And as you can see, it's a plain URL, um, unlike something like this menu.js, which has the version from jQuery uh, in it. That's an old version. What's that? Anyway, doesn't matter. So I want to just upgrade that little loader uh, so that it passes in the version of WP Quan Pixie. So I need to do that. Uh, so let's, oh, that's not what I want to do. Uh, I want main.js. So this is going to basically, uh, I want to make sure that this import statement passes in at there, and then uh, I need to pass in the version from Cron Pixie, which I don't think I have at the moment, so I'll need to check that. Um, and then I will just I'll just slap it on here. So uh, let's find out where I have that.
Okay, I've got it in plugin meta. Oh, I'm loading that in. Okay, well, in this sync queuing bit here, I create a variable with all the strings um, and so on here. We have the admin URL, security nonce, uh, the time period for how often we would normally refresh the data from the UI. Um, and then we have the initial schedules as well. Uh, and a couple of booleans as to whether we are showing the events, uh, so example events, or whether we're doing an auto refresh or not. I'm not passing the version up to the UI. So I wonder if I could just, what's in plugin meta? I wonder if there's more than just the version that's useful. Uh, it's coming from the top end. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's a plugin meta. We've got the slug, we've got the name. That's interesting. Hmm, I could be using that. Um, and then we have oh Bobby Ann. And then we have the actual start file and the version. I probably only really need the version. I don't think I'll need the rest on the UI. Let's have a look. Um, Where do we set the title? Interesting. What is that that's coming in? Name. OK, so that's where it is coming in. That's good. All right, that's fine. So it's been that name is being used when we create the dashboard widget using a WordPress function. That's good. That means it's not hard coded. I was a little bit wide there. <laughs> so while since I worked on this, all right, I think all I need to do is pass in that. Um, as another option here. Yeah. So we'll just call this well, just fashion. Oh, that didn't auto format. What? Hmm. Something is amiss. Right. Let's switch this and see. works. So in theory, I now have a cron pixie data object, which also has a version string in it. Let's try that. Uh, so we will do 
make clean. That one looks okay. And let's add a new version of the zip. And success. Okay, that's good. Job done. Good. I just make sure um, if you're using various types of caches um, that it busts the cache when you change your version. Okay. Now for the fun bit. So what we're going to do here, we need to create a new version. Well, it's not a new version, is it? Let's uh, update. So what we're going to be working on is the source UI source UI.clean. And I also obviously want to reference the ARM code. So this is it at the moment on the Gleam side. Um, we have the main in it. We have this type that we're not going to be keeping, or rather changing quite considerably. Uh, the init is probably going to need to decode the flags into a proper model. Um, and then obviously the update and the view are going to change a lot. If I look at the Elm code, the model that. Oh yeah, I was picking out specific parts. So that's, that's okay. Hmm. Okay. This is going to be fun. Trying to work out what's different and what's the same. I should probably put some tests in as well. So the bit that I'm, let's get a basic structure in with basically nothing there. And then we'll start filling out things like the init function so that we can decode the JSON variables at the beginning. And then that will give us some idea on how to keep things working after that for the model because it should build up the basic structure. Um, and we'll have basically nothing in the update at start. Um, and then we'll 
have like a view which just basically says hello world or something. Because there's a bunch of stuff I need to do here. And we need to build it up slowly. Although a lot of that, I think, will just pull straight across. Obviously, I can't do some of the later stuff. So, all right, okay. So... Yeah. We have... Oh yeah, we've got the ticker thing as well. Hmm. Okay. Right, trying to work out where to start. I think... I think we need to make sure we're using the right type of main and get something into the model. And then we'll display some basic info. Uh, right, so I need to Let's look at the docs for Luster. Um, you can see here we have some great docs in here. Uh, some installation stuff, we've done all that. What I want is, um, if I look at the quick start guide, uh, you'll see it starts off doing a very simple thing. Then it creates uh, a simple app, which is what we've got already. And then, does it even talk about application? Yeah. Then it switches to luster.application as the main runner or the type, uh, which requires some slight changes to the... the init okay and the update Okay, let's get this working then. Let's have a look at the actual so yeah, so and it does produce a expect to produce a, an effect. Update is same. View is just take a model effectively and produce some element. Okay. Right, let's steal some. Uh, Okay, 
Right, let's do this. Let's take this. I want to start annotating. I want to make sure that um, we uh, show the annotations here. So at the moment, in it, when we need to update this so it says what it's taken, but what do is this? And then we'll switch this up. Oh, yeah. I think I've broken my um, autocomplete in uh, NeoVM, so I need to type everything out. So we don't have a boo. Right, let's do. Type model. And at the moment, it's just an int. Uh, okay, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I need to double check what I'm doing here. I might need to have a quick look at the guide before I start doing this kind of stuff. Well, the thing is, I don't want to be doing that. I want that or this model, but I can't be running before I can walk if I do that. There's too much data to be handling there. Hmm. Can I? Let's just do this. Um, And then, yeah. Okay. And then we're going to return tuple of the model with, I just pass in the flags here, because that is just going to be an integer coming in. And then effect. Mm, I think it's none. I probably need to unknown module. Uh, presumably. Luster, I guess, fine. Did I mean int? I 
I don't know, did I? I did. Okay. Oops. Okay. This is the uh, the great thing about compiled languages. It tells you everything that you're doing wrong. Uh, you finally get to the point where you have something that works. Right, type mismatch expected, function found what? Found type if any error. Model message. Ah, okay. Yeah, the update's not correct yet. Yep, yep. So let's do double check that. So the update. Yeah, should return the same thing. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so now we need to update this. Right, so before I go anywhere, let's say, oops, this is of type model, and this is going to be of type message. Let's do flags at the moment is an int. Let's get everything sorted out. Uh, yeah, so that's at the moment. Expecting an int. So we're good there. We'll update these things in a bit. So the update, I need to do this, basically. I need to say, hey, take the model and then update the count to its current value plus one. So that's fine. I can just steal that. <laughs> wrong press, wrong buttons there. Um, sorry if you can hear the peacock in the background it's doing its nut. Um, so we have the model there, um, and for the moment I'm going to probably just do effect none. Okay. And then, right, we're basically doing the same here. I'm just going to call it decrement and then minus. Okay. It is better style to use the record creation syntax. What does that mean? Okay, tutorial time. Uh, -la 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 -la. Okay. Do 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 do. Where's records?
Okay, so. That's fine. Okay, updates. Uh, okay, that's what I've just done. That's exactly what we've just done. I think. Take the model. And substitute that with that. And the quick guide for luster doesn't do anything different. It prepends a new cat onto a list of cats. That's different. I'll have to come back to that one because I don't understand what the difference is. It is unfortunately about a month since I went through this guide. I probably should go through it again, this tour, um, to refresh myself and, and how it works. Um, I'm also not going to do that just now. Let's just get this basic thing working. Then I'll have a look at this style, see what's different. So view, so the view, um, it's expecting now a model to, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we haven't updated the view yet. So the model comes in. And then it returns, uh, what does it return? An element. Element dot element with a message. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That. Okay. Right. So presumably here. We take the model count. Because we've now given it some structure. All right. So we have the view annotated with its types. The update with its types, although apparently I'm doing something wrong about the model record creation there. 
Um, we have a message which is standard. It we are taking an integer flags and we turn in a model and effect with a message. Uh, the model we now have a little bit of structure to it. And then the main, again, we've put some types on here. And in theory, that should all work. So let's give it a quick go. Make sure it's not broken. Let's get rid of that, that and that. Still works. That's good. All right. Still got a few minutes yet. So we now have some annotations on here, and we just upgraded everything to use the Lust application so that I can do effects and stuff uh, and try and fire off HTTP requests and things later. So this model, hmm. Redundant record update. This record update specifies all fields. It is better style to use the record creation. Okay, not update, creation syntax. I, I kind of misread that in my, I don't know how. Okay, fine. Right, I understand that now. That's okay. So what it's basically saying is what I should do is this, just create the record. Don't do the update bit here. Um, because I am specifying all the values in the update, so I might as well just give me give do a creation. Uh, we're not going to be adjusting anything. We are basically creating a brand new record, so that makes sense. Um, I just didn't read that right. So what it's asking me to do is simply take that out. Um, can I just take out the annotation as well? Yeah, I can. I'm not going to though. So that'll work as well. Okay. Right. So before we do anything, I want to start putting in some tests because this is going to get a little bit hairy. Otherwise, um, It'd be really nice if I could have this fully tested. I don't think I did that with the M1. So let's see. This could be fun. Let's try and update 
Let's see if the init works, because I'm going to need to I'm going to need to be passing a bunch of JSON to create the first model. Um, and then from that, we'll be, at, well, as we go along, some of that data that's coming from the flags will also be coming back later again. Um, from admin Ajax requests. So I'll have to have a decoder for them as well. So I could build up the decoder, get some data into the model and then be set up for the future when I do it on a HTTP request. So I guess that's probably a good place to start and build up things. And then I could start uh, implementing that. Hmm. Okay. All right. So in theory, we have source UI tests, UI test clean. We do. Okay. Not a lot going on there. Okay. We should probably be um, testing this. Let's I'm going to reconfigure this. Don't think I have. Oh, wrong plugin. Yeah, no tests in there. Okay, I'll come back to that then. Hopefully that's above my head. Um, let's just go into the UI. And do a gleam test. Okay. Okay, now we've got some money tests. So in theory, if I say two here, and save that, it fails. Put it back to one, passes, great. Okay, we're in business. All right, let's start working on this then. So I want to, I'll leave that one on the end for the moment. Let's do pub function in it test. Um, if I do I do in it. If I do in it, 
zero. That should equal Now I'm going to get this right. Um, tuple. Of model count zero. And bet none. I don't know whether that's right. I'm kind of making it up as I go along. Let's ch double check. We need an iron effect. No, that's right. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. Kind of winging it, but we'll see. Syntax error. I was not expecting this. Ah, I've missed one there. There we go. In it, unknown variable, did you mean nil? The name in it. Oh. Is that because it's not public? Private type used in public interface. The following type is private, but is being used by this public export. Private types can only be used within the module that defines them. Okay. Interesting. Right, so if this, I'm wondering whether I'm doing the right thing here anyway. Oh, maybe it's just that I need to do like UI. Uh, okay, I am confused. Do we have tests in this?
Okay. see how we do testing here because I'm obviously missing something All right, testing your code. Hmm. So it's, uh, the example here is basically testing another module. But it doesn't show me how to test a function in the main module. Let's look at Glee unit. No, not info here. Uh, to be anything in the repo? Oh, the repo is not even found. I should do a different search there. Oh. St. Louis. No examples. Okay, uh, right, how do I test then? In it. So we've got bars. Do I just need to import UI?
No. Well, hold on. Ah, okay. Unknown variable. Oh, hold on a minute. I've got my, oops. That's doing that. So we're returning a tuple of model. An effect. Now, I'm guessing that there's a better type to that that I should be using. So let's look at Lustre. Hmm. I guess is okay. I just need to import it. Okay. All right. Small. Okay. Right. So that's our basic in it, and I'm out of time. <laughs> All right, so next time I need to um, Test model keep going away from where I'm on. Um, to uh, create model to do decode. Model. Okay. We'll do that next time and see if we can get um, some of that JSON stuff working. But uh, I've run out of time. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and until next time, you take care. Bye.